This is Frederick from Detroit, Berlin, and today I'm in a bit of an awkward position because I'm going to make a video about the A154 sequencer controller by Duffer, and it controls the analog trigger sequencer by Duffer, the A155, on which I recently did a video. So I need to show everything on the screen and therefore my camera is in a little bit of an awkward position. But yeah, I would say just let's first go over the patch, then over all the controls on the module, what the sequencer controller does, etc. And maybe afterwards another little patch. But first I'll explain what this patch is all about. So the sequencer controller by Duffer, the A154, controls the A155 analog trigger sequencer by Duffer. You have the control section of the analog trigger sequencer and it kind of takes over the control section. You do have a switch to put it back in manual mode, which actually means that if you're controlling the analog trigger sequencer with the control panel on the analog trigger sequencer, that will take over. And when you flip the switch, then the sequencer controller will take over. And the sequencer controller adds to the sequencer. Like the name suggests, it controls the sequencer. And although the sequencer perfectly works without the sequencer controller. I do think it has a few nice things in petto. So yeah, let's first go over the patch and see how everything is working. The sequencer controller has a few CV inputs. The mode CV, which is controlled by another analog trigger sequencer, that will make the sequencer controller go forward, backward, pendulum-wise or random or CV controlled. Then you've got the first step CV and the last step CV. And that means that you actually CV control which is the very first step of the sequence where the sequence begins and what is the last step of the sequence where the sequence stops. So I'm controlling that by the quantized stored random voltages, the A149-1 by Duffer. I already did a video on that one. I might link it in the description down below. So that controls in a kind of random way the first and the last step of the sequence, which makes the 
whole sequence seem kind of random, but then again, um, yeah, everything is becoming random because I'm CV controlling a lot of parameters. I'm clocking everything from the sequencer control. It has an internal clock. You can use an external clock. It has its benefits to use the internal clock because then you have the pulse width. You can control with the pulse width the triggers of the analog sequencer, the length of the triggers. You can control it with the pulse width control. The rest of the patch is the analog trigger sequencer pitch going into the dual quantizer, then it will be going to the matriarch with the clock of the sequencer controller. I'm clocking the mutable instrument grid. The grid is triggering the uh, Pico drums from Erika Synth, which has a bass drum and a kind of percussive element that's also going into the matriarch and then I'm using the second analog trigger sequencer which is running parallel with the first analog trigger sequencer. I'm triggering the Vectral Low Pass Gate A101-2. Already did a video on that one. Try to link it in the description down below. Um, I'm creating resonance. I'm inputting a steady oscillator sound from the Tiptop Z3000 and yeah that's also going into the matriarch so a lot is going into the matriarch I'm not sequencing anything with the matriarch and yeah then I'm using the cutoff to create some more motion let's go over the module the A154 sequencer controller by Dofer. It has multiple sections and let's start with the top section. You got the mode which has a mode CV input. You can input a control voltage in there. Then you got an attenuator. Then you got the mode knob and the mode knob it will switch between forward mode, backward mode, pendulum mode random mode and CV control mode. More on that later. So if you reach CV control mode then you notice that the knob is slightly past half. If you turn further then you will go into one shot mode and that means that the sequence will play once. So forward mode it will play forward one time and then it will stop at the last step. Backward the other way around. Pendulum mode it will go forward and then back and then stop. Random mode it will play randomly until it randomly stops. Then you have control CV mode which is actually kind of an addressed mode in a way that you input a control voltage in the first step because you can see on the panel that it is linked to the first step. You can put a control voltage in there and then use maybe another sequencer to sequence the step of the analog trigger sequencer that is controlled by the sequencer controller. That is one way or you can have a random voltage but then it's kind of the same as the random mode although you can maybe have kind of a different random voltage or just an LFO or anything. You can also play it with a keyboard I suppose. So you can control the sequence with the keyboard. That would be pretty interesting I think. Then you get the second section which has the first step selector and the last step selector. When the first is all the way down and the last is all the way up then you get with an analog trigger sequencer of eight steps. The first step will be the first, the last step will be the eighth step. If you turn that down, the 8th step will become yeah, the 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th and so forth step as last step. When you turn it all the way down, the last step will be step 1. So the first step is also the last step. If you turn the first step up, then yeah, the first step will be step 
one, two, three, four, and so on until you reach step eight. When both first and last step reach each other, then you got only one step and you don't really have a sequence anymore. So keep that in mind. You can CV control it. You get the first CV input with an attenuator. Then you got the last TV input with an attenuator. And then you got the steps switch. And this is only for when you have a voltage controlled switch. This is the output and it will have no voltage going out the first to the eighth step. And then the ninth to the sixteenth step it will make a high voltage which can flip the voltage controlled switch. You need a separate voltage controlled switch like I have here a dual voltage control switch. And then you can switch between signals so an 8 step sequencer can become a 16 step sequencer. If you have two analog trigger sequencers yeah you can create two 16 step sequencers but I'll make a separate video on that. Then you got the clock section. It has an internal clock. You can also use an external clock, but more on that later. So with the internal clock, you got a clock CV with an attenuator. So you can CV control the speed of the clock. And it's not the same as using an external clock. It will just like you speed up and slow down the internal clock. You can CV control it. So you can make a sequence uh, controlling the CV knob which makes it go really quick then slow then maybe a little bit quicker then slow again and like you want. Maybe you can CV control it with the sequencer itself and then you get a more modulating uh, speed of the sequence or you can just randomly control it. Then you get a clock that is randomly changing speed. Then you get the pulse width and the pulse width is actually controlling the trigger out of the analog trigger sequencer. They're triggers but with the pulse width turned up they become gates. So all the way down they will be short triggers. All the way up they will become a long gate. It also has a pulse width CV a control input that is being attenuated by this knob. You got the two outputs of the internal clock. You can really go into audio range, then you can go into a really slow clock. The clock is always st yeah, steady unless you feed it clock CV input. It's always steady the clock and it is normalized. So if you put an external clock in here, then you can yeah, externally control it. The downside of that is that the pulse width is no longer having an effect because the pulse width is actually the pulse width of the internal clock. You see when you turn the pulse width all the way down you get a trigger and when you turn it up you get a longer gate. When you put it all the way up the sequence will stop because there's only an outgoing voltage and yeah it will not proceed. That is the clock. Also got a manual clock button which if you plug a cable into the external clock with no signal going into the sequencer controller then you can actually if you start the sequence it will not proceed to the next step because it does not receive a clock input but you can control it by just pressing the clock button then you got an external reset. You input a signal, it will reset the sequence when it's running. You can also do that manually. An external stop in which will stop the sequence when you feed it a high voltage. Also manual control. Then you got the external start, just the same. It will start the sequence when it receives a high voltage or when you press the start button. And then all the way down you got a master section which has a manual on and off switch and that means manual on will make 
the master, the analog trigger sequencer itself. If you use the clock of the sequencer controller, you feed it into a clock divider, then you feed a division to the clock input on the analog trigger sequencer. You can actually switch between the clock that is in the sequencer controller and the clock that is divided and switch between the two. I think that is a really nice ability and with a high or low voltage you can kind of flip the switch automatically which makes it a module that is really controllable by external modules and they can all play a role in making the sequence very lively. That's about it. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and if you really want to support me even more please take a look at my Patreon page on which I give you previews on which modules I'm currently working at. I'm giving small updates and a few other goodies. I've got a higher tire in my Patreon and one is where I give you feedback or I answer music related questions or if you have need for information on modules and which modules to buy or you setting up a system and you want some help then you can yeah look at my Patreon and maybe I can help you there. Uh, I also give feedback on your music if you select that tire and yeah please have a look at it and maybe let's set up another patch and then yeah call it a wrap. So here is another sequence I made it is actually 16 steps and I'm using one analog trigger sequencer the dual VCS voltage control switch the sequencer controller then some random modulation and a clock divider the things I was talking about in the uh, module oversight and let's see how bizarre it can actually sound. So let's unplug this control. Now it's just running the sequence. And these are the digital random voltages. See, this is a random sequence controlled by the quantized random voltages. And now it's switching between the two and the signal is high, it is in manual off mode, when it's low it's in manual on mode. So switching between the analog trigger sequencer, clock control and the sequencer controller clock control, which is passing through the clock divider and then back in. So it's half time and third time divisions. I can actually switch it up. To create various rhythms. So it's really playful. Changing the mode. I could of course also, let's see. Make it a uh, 
So you can really change up the patterns it's generating by using really a lot of modules, but still, I think it's fun and interesting. Really interesting, I think. It's running in pendulum mode, so going that way. Really nice use of, in my opinion, of the quantized random voltages and stored random voltages. These digital outputs, they can trigger attack delays, ADSRs, they also can flip switches and the randomness is super controllable. And by turning a few knobs, this weird randomness is getting better and getting worse. Maybe let's control the last step also. Make it even more unmanageable. So weird, <laughs> really weird. Breaking down everything.
I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.